In 2012, secessionist and Islamist linked to Al-Qaeda seized control of Timbuktu in Mali. Timbuktu reached its peak as a center of Islamic culture and scholarship in the 16th century. This was its golden age. It was now a city in the Songhai Empire. Of the city's population of nearly 100,000, a quarter were students and scholars. Many of these came from other parts of the Islamic world to study or to teach at the city's many madrasas. But now its rich history was being threatened. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb enforced Islamic law, forcing women to cover up, flogging people for wearing perfume, and tearing down stained graves and a mosque door that legend has it was to remain closed until the end of the world. Musicians received death threats. Their instruments were burned. One Islamist arrived at the radio station that had collected decades worth of local music one day and carted away all the tapes in rice sacks. Islamists threatened that they would cut the tongue of famed Timbuktu musician Kiria Arbi when they captured her. Tuareg musician Ahmed Akadi was absent when militia men ransacked his home and said that they would cut off all those fingers he used to play the guitar. The militia men then proceeded to drag all of Ahmed's musical equipment into the courtyard, which was then doused with petrol and set a lit. But some look back at this time as a time of great musical creativity. We composed a lot of music during the crisis, but inside our houses in secret, said Abdurrahman Sise, a mechanic and musician known locally as Ade, who did backing vocals for RB. We were singing about what we were going through to transmit the message about what was happening. The music of Mali is therefore a vanguard of non-violent resistance against those who wish to suppress this effervescent aspect of Malian culture. When I started making this video, I wanted to talk about how amazing music for Mali is. I wanted to talk about the unique blend of blues, Afrobeat and rock in Amadou and Miriam's music. I wanted to talk about how Tinarawen is one of the greatest rock groups of all time and how we should be put in the league of other famous rock groups. I also wanted to talk about how the kora is the coolest musical instrument that I have ever seen. An instrument that looks like a guitar, but is played like a harp and blown into like a flute. But when I zoomed out, I saw a pattern. Music from Mali has a deep historical, social and political meaning. Let's discuss why music from Mali is political. Immediately following independence, President Mudibo Kete, then president of Mali, was primarily focused on nation-building efforts and used music as a vehicle to achieve cultural unity. In order to understand why he did this, one must first trace the historical and political role of the musician in Mali. The tradition of Dijeli, a noble caste of oral singers and praise singers, played a crucial role in nation-building. Since the founding of the Mali Empire, the Ijali have acted on behalf of their rulers and wealthy patrons to maintain the support and the values which underlay the political structure of society. They did so by acting as oral repositories for customs, traditions and the principles of government. Following independence, Keta sought to create a national identity through traditional culture. He did so by drawing from a celebration of the distant pre-colonial history and downplaying the immediate colonial history. The prestige of the Jelly's historical knowledge gave them the official authority to narrate the history of a new nation following independence. For the country's inception, politics and music have artfully commingled. Salif Kaita, the honey voiced musician, first achieved pain in a band set up by the Minister of Information to play a residency in a station hotel. He was then poached by the chief of police to join their rivals, whose guitarist was Amadou Bagayoko, now a global superstar with his golden guitar along his wife Miriam. Umuwi Sangari, the country's biggest female star, made her name in her early 20s with a breathtaking album tackling issues such as female circumcision and women's role in society. When an outspoken reggae singer called Tikenja Foucault upset the rulers of his native Ivory Coast and was then declared persona non grata by Senegal's president, he made his home in Bamako, where he still filled football stadiums. 
In Mali, there is also Tuareg music due to the large Berber ethnic group that principally inhabit the Sahara in a vast area stretching from Mali to Algeria, Niger, and Burkina Faso. One of the most famous Tuareg music groups is known as Tunarawen. The name Tunarawen means empty place or desert in connection to the vast desert regions of the Southern Sahara. Tinarawen blends ancient musical tradition with radical contemporary politics. Their music is an oral reflection of the political repression in Mali and the struggle for self-determination among the Tuareg nomads. The band was formed in 1979 in Taman Rasat, Algeria, but returned to Mali after a peace accord. In 1990-1995, a rebellion by the various Tuareg groups took place in Niger and Mali with the aim of achieving autonomy or forming their own nation-state. This insurgency occurred in a period following the regional famine in the 1980s and subsequent refugee crisis, and a time of general political repression and crisis of both nations. Considered the pioneer of desert blues, this group first started to gain a following outside the Sahara region in 2001 with the release of the album The Radio Tista Session and performances at the Festival U Desert in Mali and the Ross Cloud Festival in Denmark. From all these examples, we see the way in which music is interwoven in the social and political life of Mali. But the music in Mali is not just political, it is also fucking amazing. And this is due to its unique location. Mali is a nation at the fault line between Africa and the Middle East. Timbuktu became a meeting point between North, South and West Africa and a melting pot of Black Africans, Berber Arab and Tuareg Desert Nomads. Whether it's the smooth fusion of Western pop, rock and blues by Amadou and Maryam, or the sound bending guitar driven Sahara blues at Narawen, or even Ali Farka Tore, the godfather of desert blues known for his hypnotic, rhythmic, and self-assured playing. Music from Mali has something for everyone, and we should all be paying attention. While I was finishing up this video, Google it came out with a website called Mali Magic that basically documents the great legacy of Mali and its people. And in this website, it goes through the four M's of Mali, and those M's include manuscripts, music, monuments, and modern art. I think you should all check this website out, especially if you enjoyed this video. The link will be in my description box. Thank you.